Okay, so to show you the back of this a little bit, looking up here at this, you can see that we only have one cable going up there. That's just the HDMI coming from the Raspberry Pi down here. And we got our power, which is divided off onto this splitter right here. And the splitter, of course, goes into the 12 volt. Uh, like I showed, hold on, I dropped something. Like I showed uh, on the last part of this video and our power button is also hooked up now i'm going to show you how to hook that up here in just a minute but i want you to take a look at this uh you can see that it's actually on a pretty long cord there there's actually three wires there that we need to do this now let me go ahead and push this power button you can see it lit up there it turned on our raspberry pi uh, should turn on our monitor here. There we go. It just kicked on and this thing should be booting up now while it's booting up here We'll talk about uh, Another splitter that's going on here. That's actually coming from the Raspberry Pi right here into this jack uh, There's our sound um, So that splitter actually goes off to this. This is another button uh this is a different type of LED button. This is also ran on 5 volt. And I talked about this uh, a little bit in parts one and two, this type. And this is the one that I'm actually going to use for this cabinet uh, when I uh, do this uh, control panel in the front that I talked about replacing. Now, um, let's see if we can... Oh. Let's, let's go up here. You can actually hear, uh, hear that sound. That's coming from those speakers up there. Turn on the light. Right there. And it's actually pretty loud. Uh, at least it is in my opinion. So, yeah, no need for an amp because the uh, speaker sound is, you know, coming from right here. Now, I had to do a couple settings um, on the Raspberry Pi 4 to make it actually work through HDMI. I actually had to force the sound through. Uh, there's some links on the RetroPie forums. Otherwise, if you need the link, just ask me. But uh, come on, people, you know how to use Google. But anyways, uh, so this here, as you can see, is actually powering our um, LEDs as well. Now, it's not being powered from the Raspberry Pi, of course, because all that's plugged into the Raspberry Pi is just this one right here for the joysticks and what have you, and the HDMI and the power. So, we're actually leading our extra splitter here to the uh, daisy chain to make this run so it's a nice way to power your leds as well and you're not using power from the raspberry pi to do it uh, the power switch um, you can actually get different brands different sizes what have you this is the one i'm using uh, again this is made so that when you depress it it stays down it keeps the power on that light comes on and if you release it it powers everything off and you can just see this green light turn to red here as soon as the uh, monitor goes into standby and there it goes all right so that's all powered down now um as i had said before i'm actually not going to use a raspberry pi in this cabinet uh just because i don't like raspberry pies for arcades that's just a personal choice um, you know, you might be perfectly fine with it. I'm not going to say, you know, well, you what you have sucks because, you know, the Raspberry Pis are all right. It's just not my personal choice. Um, what I do want to talk about, though, is this button. Now, if we come over here, let me swing around here, get this out of the way. Here is the actual control panel that uh, I'm going to use. It's, you know, not that plain red stuff. I actually use some uh, better quality vinyl wrap for the bottom here. And then I did have a uh, new control board uh, cut for me. Actually, I have several of these. Let me grab one off the shelf here so you can ooh, see that. Um, <laughs> here it is. Um, this has just got... Uh, it's basically the same uh, layout as my um, 
arcade pack up uh, control panel, which you can see right up there if you want to check out that. And I'll actually go over some uh, kind of advanced wiring in that a little bit. But, uh, anyways, I digress. So, this is the new control panel, and this one I actually had cut right down the middle there with a groove so that I could put T-molding in it. And uh, this right here, little button, 16 millimeter hole, I, maybe that's 5 eighths, is that what that translates to? I don't know, but that's, uh, that's where our button's gonna go. On the back of this, uh, um, I kinda wanted you to see this. Uh, you know, before I get to that, I'll actually show you this, what I'm doing here. I'm actually putting, um, these are called uh, rolly leaf switches. I turn these in here and adjust these right. This is a <coughs> kind of a different type of uh, button for your arcade. Uh, these are ones that a lot of people will just swear by. Um, I like them. They're a lot quieter uh, on these concave type buttons here than uh, the regular, where is it, these things that you plug in. Um, I'm not going to get into those too much, but I just wanted to show you that, that that's actually what I'm putting on mine is the rollies, and I'm also going to put on that, and I believe it's in this box up here, here it is, this is a servo stick. Uh, well, actually, this is a J-stick, and this is actually the servo stick conversion. What this does is it has a little motor on there that will switch between 4-way and 8-way. Uh, you can check that out on uh, Google somewhere. There's a bunch of YouTube videos on that, but uh, it's a nice way to go from 4-player to or four way to eight way on your uh, joystick but uh, i'm not going to do that in this video uh what we're, i'm going to focus on right here now this hole right here as, as i said on this side this is that 16 millimeter hole for that 16 millimeter button uh the, the easiest way to mount these because you see this here is like half inch material and the buttons themselves let me grab one off the shelf here that's not it. No, it's here somewhere. Got like a bunch of them. Oh, what did I do with it? I spaced it off. Here's one. <laughs> Hard to find them. Um, not very deep um, when you put them in there. So what I did is on... The, the best way to do this is you drill a bigger hole here and this is a standard uh, 30 millimeter or you know one inch hole and I went about a little less than halfway down probably about eighth of an inch well maybe let's see well, yeah, it's two sixteenths about three sixteenths of an inch down into it and then right in the center of that is actually where the hole for the 16 millimeter button is now what that does is it allows you to actually mount this and that'll actually be flush on here uh let me actually cut this and install the button and uh, i'll show you what it looks like and then we'll talk about wiring it up okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to start out with the basic wiring on this dc to dc converter and then we're going to step up to a switch for it and then we're going to move on from there to the final switch right here which is going to go on the cabinet with all these wires so to start out with uh again to give you a refresher uh 12 volt goes on this side five volt outputs on this side now if you look right here <clears throat> let me scoot this up here uh, on the 12 volt end, we have this type of barrel, which is where our power supply from our uh, arcade one up is going to plug into. And on this one, we have our output for our 5 volt. Now, on this 5 volt output, um, I have this little barrel right here, and what it is attached to is actually this 
light here. Uh, this is going to represent our Raspberry Pi and our LEDs and all that stuff. So when you see that go on, you know that we are good to go on the power. So we'll just set that off to the side there, and you're going to know that when we have power going through, we are good. So first of all, we'll take our 5 volt out, and we're going to plug it into this barrel, and we'll call this, again, our Raspberry Pi. So that one is done. We can set that back off to the side there. And on this one, we got this uh, end, which goes into our Arcade 1UP power supply, and we'll say that right there. What I'm actually using is this 12-volt, uh, 10-amp power supply right here. So uh, we'll take our, whoop, let me scoot that off there, 12-volt power right here. And we're going to plug it in to our lead. And as you can see, our button is now lit up. Now, your switch is actually just two wires coming together to create a contact to make the power go through. What I have here is just a basic button. Uh, and this is what I'm going to use as an example to show you. You push it in, it's on, take it off it is off and it's got two wires that come out and these wires lead down to this end here of course where you got the two wires that make the contact now the basics on doing a button like this first of all we'll unplug this to be safe um, we're gonna take the power coming out from the 12 volt and we're gonna loosen that up and we're gonna pull this wire and we're going to separate it here a little bit from that so that these two wires are actually split up. We're going to leave our ground in there for now. We're not going to do nothing with that for now. But all we're going to do is take this main power coming in off of our uh, connector here that we made. And we're going to wrap it around here. Now, I'm just showing this as an example. Uh, you, of course, would probably want to strip these out. Uh, maybe put some... Uh, some of these on here this is some shrink wrap tube make this look pretty but we're just experimenting here and i'm showing you the wiring there's no need to get into that but anyways so one end's going to go on to that and then our other end we're going to put right back in to the uh 12 volt input positive on there and we'll tighten that down real fast and we'll go ahead and plug this barrel back in our light isn't on, but we do have our button here. So now if we push our button, our light comes on, our light comes off, light comes on, light comes off. Now you can imagine this button would be your Raspberry Pi coming on or off. Now you could, of course, use a button like this too. You don't have to have it light up if you don't want to. Uh, the light is just kind of something extra. Now on this, let me find this loom here. On this one, you see five wires. Now, this can look a little bit confusing. Now, I'm going to assume that you're using the exact same type of button that I'm using. Again, uh, you can use whatever one you want. You'll want to look at the schematics on that to see where all the wires go. Um, the colors on there actually don't match up traditionally to what you might think. Like, typically, like in America... Black is ground, red is positive, and you would think, well, that's the way it is, but it's not. Uh, in this case, uh, on this particular one, red is actually our ground wire. And uh, positive is actually the green one. <laughs> green. To make this a little easier, let's look at the screen here for a minute at the schematics on this button. So it'll kind of give you an idea of how this is going to work. Um, on the top one, there's actually a couple different ways to wire this up. On the top one here is the way that I'm going to do it, where it's actually when you push the button, the light will come on, the device comes on. Uh, you release the button, the light goes off, and the device goes off. The device, of course, being the Raspberry Pi, or in this case, it's going to be that little LED light that we're playing with. Uh, another way, if you look at the schematics here, is running it from this white wire. Uh, when you push the button, the light is actually in the off state, and the device is in the off state, and then you release it, and it goes on. It's just kind of the opposite. But we're going to focus, actually, on this 
top one right here, number one, uh, and this is how we're going to wire it. Now, again, uh, here's those color differences that I was talking about here, where right here, this little battery right here, you can imagine uh, positive, negative. You could, as you can see, the negative goes into this red, so the red is actually the ground, and the positive on this one goes into the green. Uh, that's the two short ones. Let's let's not mind what's over here, but let's just look at this real quick. Um, top one, positive, goes into the green. Bottom here, negative, goes into the red. Green and red, there's our basic uh, for the switch. Now, we don't really need a ground if we're not using a light, like I showed you in the example with that little uh, push button that I just showed where it's just, you know, if you can imagine, it would basically be the positive going in here and then that outputting to your device. That was our basic switch. Now, the light gets added in, so we have to actually power that light that's inside that button kind of separately. That's why there's actually all these wires. But um, since, as you can see in this part of the schematic, this white one isn't being used. It's not connected to nothing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip that white wire since I'm not going to be using this. You don't have to clip it. You can save it in case you decide to change this around. But uh, for the sake of what we're going to be doing in this project, I'm going to go ahead and clip that wire. So these two wires we know are going to come from the battery or otherwise if you can think of this battery as the uh, arcade one-up power supply right here so we'll say this is the arcade one-up power supply uh, the ground of course there and there so that leaves these two here now you can see these two the yellow and the black are actually connected together so what we'll have to do is we'll have to wrap this black and this yellow around each other and then lead that lead out to the positive and as you can see right here uh, positive negative we've got actually two negatives we have a ground coming in here and this ground is basically like I said for the light if we're just using a regular switch we don't need this ground so we have to do a separate connection for the light and then another ground so so right here we can see where we're splitting off our ground is going to go to our device. Now we're going to call this device not necessarily the Raspberry Pi. This is going to be our uh, 12 volt converter. So think of this as our 12 volt converter box. Here is our again Raspberry Pi power. Uh, I'm sorry, Arcade One Up power supply. Here's our button. Here's our 12 volt converter. And uh, of course, we know how the 12 volt converter works. The little 5 volt goes off to the Raspberry Pi. But you can see what's happening here is when we depress the button, it's turning on the 12 volt converter, which does its thing. So, as you can see here, what we need is basically three connections coming out from the uh, thing to go to our button. We need a uh, connection right here for the ground. We need a connection for our positive going into the button. And we also need another connection to lead out to our device. And of course, along this chain, you can see this is actually kind of a long line. If you follow this here to here and from here to here. So we're going to need a longer cable to go to there. So let's, let's show that. Uh, in real time with uh, the real components and we'll wire this upright so let me stop this and quit my babbling and we'll go back to the uh, drawing board here all right so let's put that schematic to some real use uh, again here is our, ras our uh, arcade one up power supply and here is our little uh, adapter thing here that is going to go into our uh, <clears throat> DC to DC converter and here is our button again so again remember from the schematics that the red wire is the ground so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our ground wire into that and we're gonna screw that down real quick 
just to have that done. So our ground is now in. And I also clipped the white wire, like I said, because we're not going to need it. And remember I said that what we were going to have to do is we were going to have to cross that yellow wire and the black wire. So we're going to go ahead and cross that yellow and black wire. And that is going to go into our positive on the DC to DC converter. And again, I will screw that down real fast here. That's done. That's three wires taken care of. All that's left is the uh, these ones. Now, as you can see, we have no ground connected on there. So, of course, this ground is going to have to go on there as well. So, let me unscrew this again. Sorry, I guess I should have done that in the first place. <clears throat> we'll take our Arcade 1-Up uh, ground wire and we're going to put that back in there if I can get it in there. And we'll screw that down real fast. Hopefully I got that in there. I think I do. All right. So our ground wire from our Arcade 1UP power supply is now hooked up, which leaves the just the positive, which is going to go onto the button onto the green wire because remember the green wire is the positive all right so this is depressed or there we go there it's depressed there it's not no but we need to give it power first so we'll go ahead and give this thing a little bit of juice some 12 volt juice and we can test our button there we go and as you can see our light over there lit up as did our button Pretty easy. But if we look at it now, well, this is great and all, and it works and all, but we don't have enough wire to go to our control panel. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to make some more wire. Now, what I'm using is actually 18-gauge speaker wire uh, because these are 18-gauge uh, wires right here on these little uh, plug adapters that I use and all you're gonna do is just gonna you know pull out however much length that you need from your uh, coil of uh, speaker wire and uh, run that from this to the uh, control panel or wherever else you're gonna put this button at so as you seen earlier when I showed you the um, button with the inside the cabinet with the long wire that's basically all i did it was extend these out from where this goes into like right here our positive goes into the um, button right here i would just basically separate that put a longer wire in from here to here and then do the same thing of course on this one and this one of course you'll want to keep your black and yellow together and you'll want to keep uh well no i guess you don't have to keep the red together but you'll want to keep the black and yellow together extend that out put some longer wire on it connect them together and what you should have of course is a functioning button so uh we can see our button actually mounted up here on this one so that's how that's going to work here it, when we plug this in now what's nice about what's nice about uh, buttons like this is you can actually uh, just depress this here pull this out so this can actually stay in the arcade cabinet while you're building your new control panel or, or uh, drilling a hole for this power button or whatever on your other uh, arcade one-up cabinet if you're maybe modifying that one but that's how we add a uh, on off switch for our converter and this is actually gonna like i said power the raspberry pi it'll power your leds if you want power anything you want really um 
you could even, you know, do 12 volt on here if you got to add more 12 volt devices. You know, you could either add some more of these barrels to the uh, thing right here to add 12 volt. Like, let's say you have like a marquee that you need to light up or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, you just run your 12 volt stuff on this side, your 5 volt stuff on this side. And then, of course, you know, you run your button on there to, you know, turn all that stuff on and off. Pretty easy stuff, guys. But uh, that's going to be it for this video. This was just covering how that button gets wired up. Um, that's pretty much a wrap, except for the uh, software for the Raspberry Pi. Now, what I'm using is the uh, button masher uh, image from uh, Arcade Punks. Yeah, Arcade Punks. And... Uh, the reason I'm using that one uh, basically is as an example. Normally, what I like to do, I like to program it myself. I would much rather install uh, Raspbian OS and then put uh, RetroPie and uh, Attract Mode, Emulation Station, whatever, um, above that and install that that way in case i need to go to, uh, to the raspian os i can use that but that's me i'm a nerd like that but for the sake of this video i'm using an image because i'm assuming that's probably what a lot of you are going to do if you're using a raspberry pi uh, i'm using a raspberry pi 4 and that's the only vertical image that i know of. now you can actually make any image you want into a vertical image but i won't get into that um but to make the uh, vertical image work in your Raspberry Pi 4 correctly, there's a couple um, changes you need to make to a couple files uh, that will, uh, one, get your sound working off of your HDMI and, of course, sending that to the uh, converter board and up into the speakers that I showed you. And then the other one is actually to adjust the um, rotation of the screen correctly. Um, by default, the uh, button masher image on the Arcade Punks site um, doesn't have everything uh, set perfect. So what I'll do is um, I'll probably do like a part five and I'll go over that with you just to kind of have a complete rundown here of doing all this stuff. So this is going to be it for part four, guys. Hopefully you got this uh, power button figured out and I articulated that right without screwing up too much and without going uh too much because I know I tend to do that. <laughs> but uh, I will see you all again uh, probably in part five. Maybe I'll just skip part five and say screw it uh, because I do have some other projects I'd like to get to. I still have a, a new case that I wanted to go over, and I've been meaning to do it for the last month. But I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you in the next video, and bye.